Hello and welcome to a new video. Today's session is an introduction to REST APIs and JSON. Application Programming Interface, or API, is the interface through which programs communicate. If program B wants to learn the data structure of program A, both programs must communicate through their APIs. Several API exist. Representational REST API is one of them and the one listed in the CCNA exam blueprints and it will be the one we will focus on on this video. Six attributes makes an API REST API. Code on demand, layered, uniform interface, clear statement of cacheable and uncacheable, stateless operation, client and server architecture. You would notice that the top three attributes actually maps perfectly to HTTP protocol behavior. Applications perform four primary functions as defined by the software industry, CRUD. CRUD stands for create, read, update, and delete. So create allows a client to create new variables and data structure at the server. Read allows client to read variable values on the server and storing copies at the client. Update allows clients to change the values of these variables on the server and delete allows client to delete data variables. When mapping this actions to REST or HTTP, we use POST, GET, PATCH or PUT and finally DELETE. So now that we are slowly getting familiar with REST APR terms, let's go one level down. Uniform Resource Identifiers, or URIs, these are unique IDs assigned to each resource. When creating a REST API, the user defines a set of resources which will be made available via this API. These resources will have a set of variables but each resource must be uniquely identified using the URIs. This is an example of a URI with this components, protocol, host name, and a path, and we can drill deeper with a query parameter. This URI is used for a GET request, so the client would send a request and get data and variables back. But how is the set of variables presented back to the client by the server? When the data is returned to the client, it must be presented in a format the client can understand and work with. And this is what serialization does. The server gives internal data to the API. The API does the sort of translation or representation of this data. The server sends the data model in JSON, in, in this particular example. And the REST client converts JSON formatted data into its native format. So in this way, the server can present the data in a format that the REST client can understand. So in this example, we have used JSON as a serialization language, but there are at least two more you should know about and you should be able to identify them based on their format. So let's dive in and take a look at the three different serialization languages. So we were talking about JSON earlier you will know these curly brackets will be in use. This represents an object, and within the object will be key values. You will also see square brackets. These are arrays, and within these arrays, you will have values or set of values. XML is another serialization language. And finally, YAML. So with this, we have reached the end of this session. I hope you have enjoyed it and learned one or two things about REST APIs. Thank you for watching.